good evening and happy Halloween to everybody. Um, yes. Uh, so I was expecting some people to show up in costume, but I guess since the, since the design team didn't wear our costumes today, uh, we didn't expect it from you. Um, I think I've met all of you, or most of you anyway. I'm Dan Karolik. I'm the principal of Opticos Design. Uh, we've been working with the city now for pretty much right at four years. Yeah, we've, we've been working with the city about four years now on the form-based coding uh, with you all in the neighborhoods, and it's really exciting to be at this point in the neighborhood charrettes and working with uh, the large team, uh, design team actually working with you in your neighborhoods and design solutions where we can apply the form-based code. So tonight um, we've, we had a ton of people today both attend the lunchtime brown bag presentation um, and most of those people kind of filtered out into the design studio and actually sat down at the tables with the design team. So uh, we, we've gone over these ideas quite a few times today with, with many of you, um, and some of you are new, but we're gonna have the design team, first of all, go through um, the Walnut Hills design ideas. Then we're gonna have you pick up and shift back to the opposite wall uh, to look at the Madisonville design concepts. I think you're gonna be very excited uh, we got some really great response last night from... Don't oversell it, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm excited, kidding, I'm so kidding. I'm sure you all will be. Um, it, just some really great work happening, and I hope you, uh, you feel the same way. But, so I'm just going gonna, gonna to hand off to the design team here um, to go ahead and go through the Walnut Hills design proposals first. Okay. We're going to take this uh, little presentation here, I think, in three parts. Um, first, we're going to talk a little bit about what we heard from you all on Monday and what we experienced um, going around the neighborhood itself. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the strategy that we've been focusing on, um, specifically kind of around uh, McMillan and the intersection with Gilbert. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Brian to come up and talk a little bit about some plan concepts and point out um, some of the character sketches that go along with it. Um, and then finally, we um, do want to talk about some of, we have, um, we have Rick and Dwayne, our traffic engineers, who've been working on um, evaluating some of the transportation um, issues and, and concerns related to Walnut Hills. And so I'm going to ask them to come up um, to close this off and go through some of the concepts for both street sections, transit, and, um, and the impacts of the, the highway interchanges along 71. Those are our three things. So um, what we tended to do here, we had a very, um, I, I'm a little biased because I, 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 I sat in on it, but we had, um, Walnut Hills I think had maybe the best turnout on Monday. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, almost so much information, I think it's been, um, you know, we've been working really hard to try to focus it um, for the purpose of this effort. Um, and I think some of the things that we've heard loudly and clearly, uh, there is a lot of great neighborhood fabric, I think specifically in the southeastern corner of the neighborhood, beautiful housing stock. Um, we see a lot of very good street network up here to the northwest uh, corner as well, um, although maybe needs a little bit of revitalization. Um, some of the other strengths, we heard a lot of positive feedback on the two-way of Taft and McMillan. <laughs> Um, I didn't realize how new that was. That's really, really current. It's not a month old. Which is amazing. So, I mean, Jeff's been talking about driving the wrong way on the streets and the novelty. <laughs> um, so that's, that's a fan, I mean, that's fantastic progress. I thought um, a lot of very interesting, I think, comments about the, um, the impactful, historic um, significance of um, sort of abolition and underground railroad history in this neighborhood, which I think is very important. Um, and the three, you know, the sort of three critical sites related to that. Um, but then as far as, and, and then the other, um, I think the other thing that was pointed out is the intersection of McMillan and Gilbert is kind of the center, the people's corner being the center of the community. Um, the other thing that we noted, and this was part of us, um, part of our touring of the neighborhood as well, is that there are these beautiful architectural gems um, within Walnut Hill, especially on the main streets. 
Um, but you'll see here, they're kind of dabbled in. <laughs> you don't get long runs of them. Um, but they do exist, and there are some fairly significant buildings um, distributed throughout. So if we then take the kind of flip side of this, and I'm actually going to put this right over top, hopefully it won't be too confusing. Um, also documented the weaknesses. And what this starts to show is that in Walnut Hills, it's either a great or it's got some problems. <laughs> it's kind of what it seems like, especially along these roads, because interspersed among all of those sort of beautiful architectural gems are a lot of vacant properties that open parking lots um, or buildings that are either blank walls facing the street, um, some vacant shop fronts, um, some sort of low one-story buildings that aren't doing a lot to hold the streetscape. So um, the problem I noted, we talked to a couple of people in the neighborhood earlier today, is that you never get, especially along McMillan, which is the main commercial street, you never really get that sense of good fabric facing each other on both sides. There's always, <laughs> you make it good buildings over here, and then you're looking across at something you know, seedy and problematic, and then it flips. Um, so I think it's contributing sort of negatively to, um, to the impression of that portion of the neighborhood. Um, we also noted, and there were a lot of comments um, about the quadrant in the southwest of your neighborhood. Um, it is interesting, I mean, you, you guys may or may not know this, there is that grid shift that happens at McMillan where the streets shift and the blocks change size. Um, so it's, it's interesting to me that there have been problems down here. The block sizes are much smaller um, and the, topo, the topography starts to fall down into a hole. Um, so we think that there are some opportunities though between the vacancies and the gaps that are in there um, to do some kind of neighborhood revitalization in there and possibly build some new housing that can begin to fill and bolster um, that portion of the community. The other thing that we noted, um, just little things, there are still the stretches of McMillan and Taft that are one way here at the end. And we did hear a lot of desire for that to extend. So what does that mean? And perhaps um, Rick and Dwayne can cover a little bit of that. We also did notice there are a couple of spots in here. Um, I'm gonna botch the street names. Um, there's the one running, excuse me, you have Melrose, and you have the one just opposite of Chatham, the next one down, yeah, Stanford. Um, where you have just half of a block. So you have the backs of, of lots facing the street. Um, and that happens a little bit where, um, where Florence comes in uh, to Gilbert. Um, and then again at um, Curtis, Curtis Street, running one block just south of me. So those are some things that I think as we talk about the future um, of the neighborhood that we want to understand how that impacts new development. Um, and maybe, maybe it informs some of our um, design ideas. So with that being covered, I'm just take this off. Live TV. Um, generally just done a little sort of, I'm calling it a table of contents drawing um, to describe, where did my tape go? Thanks. Put it up here for you. I, only my arms were a little longer. Um, to describe sort of the strategy here. So you may remember, as I was just talking about, when we looked at the this weaknesses diagram and we began to identify you know, some of the concerns and issues along Macmillan. Um, interestingly enough, you guys have talked about the center, you know, sort of the center of your universe being at Macmillan and Gilbert. Well, look where the concentration of all of your kind of underutilized, unattractive, open parking lot, vacant land. is all kind of right in here. Um, and so one of the things we had thought um, is that because that is right on the center of the universe, you think that's your greatest opportunity um, for putting your, your most dense development within your community and really reinforcing that idea of center. So, um, you know, if at some point in the future um, the Kroger site were to redevelop, um, the idea of repurposing the Paramount building, um, and then really bolstering that frontage along McMill and through there. Um, I'm going to have Ryan talk in a little bit more detail about some of these ideas, um, but the thought of, again, in the future, if that PNC Bank can be redeveloped on that site, that that can really serve as a kind of town, your town square, or your town green, as a way to celebrate people's corner. 
um, we see that as also an opportunity perhaps to tie into some of the historic significance of sites that are maybe demolished and <laughs> no longer there but related to your history. Maybe there's a way to memorialize that as part of your, as part of your center. Um, and then we understand there are some development opportunities possibly on the University of Cincinnati site. There are some reasonably attractive buildings on the south side of the street that maybe just need a little, a little TLC. Um, and they can really kind of focus um, that intersection as, as the center of the community. And then we see the further development of McMillan going in each direction is a way to fill in some of those gaps and really begin to bolster, um, bolster uh, your, your, your population here by providing additional residential, uh, maybe more dense residential along the street, some flats, um, possibly with some ground floor uh, commercial spaces. Um, but really trying to um, aggregate most of your service uses right here and then provide additional housing options for folks so you get a lot of feet on the street feeding into this. Um, <clears throat> as I said, the neighborhoods both north and south here, west of Gilbert, probably need a little TLC, a little bit of renovation. Um, and and that's, that probably should be really the focus of a much larger plan that engages the residents in these areas and looks more specifically at your properties. Um, but one thing that we're very interested in is understanding how development here ultimately transitions in here and can begin to strengthen these communities rather than detract from them. So before I turn this over to Ryan, to go in a little more detail, what this all sort of translates into here, if I may. Okay. Yes, please. Two or one? Just one is fine. Um, and this will relate a little bit to the to the zoning and how we're thinking about it. Then, is that the area? This is this is McMillan here in Gilbert. The idea that these blocks in here form sort of what I'm calling, you know, downtown Walnut Hills, right in here. And then you really focus that this approach here is your entry from the east. This approach here is your entry from the west. So they may be um, a, a slightly lower zoning category for you guys, where you really concentrate your height and density here. And then I've highlighted these blocks in here because I think there's a need to do a kind of transition where you can allow for um, townhouses, some multifamily housing in here that is a good transition from the main street down into the neighborhood and can begin to reconnect on that end. So with that, Ryan's going to talk a little bit about some of the more detailed uh, designs that are going into 